Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. Today and tomorrow is going to be a solo mission for me. Uh, effectively, what we're going to do is going to be carrying, uh, we're going to be covering uh, conversion optimization. I'm just going to share this out to the groups now, so bear with me, and we will get into the show. Just one second. Near there. Okay. All done. All right. So basically today we're going to look at conversion optimization for your Amazon website. I'm going to do some demonstrations of looking at various different um, uh, websites. Uh, but in the whole, we're going to go over some of the science behind it, uh, some of the do's and don'ts. But the most important thing here is that you need to make sure that you test. So effectively, the, the key steps for building out a landing page, you're going to have to craft a benefit focus headline. You choose an image that it, uh, that illustrates the offer. One second, let me just turn this off. Okay, I'm back again. Uh, search functionality on non-landing pages. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of the language here for non-landing pages and website because over the course of doing uh, a few of these, uh, we'll break it down and go into a more nuanced area. So if you're going to have a lead form, that needs to be above the fold. You want to add a clear call to action in terms of the, the CTA button. Again, we're going to get into conversion colors and that later. You're going to give away a relevant offer. Normally, when you have a landing page, you're focusing on one target conversion. Uh, you only ask for what you need. And if you're using exclusive landing pages, we'll get into the data of that later, is to remove all the navigation. You also want to make sure that your page is uh, mobile responsive because a lot of people start their journey there before commitment. And also to remember using the thank you page and we'll get into conversion tracking and stuff later. Now, if we go into some of the colors here, um, so interesting one, if we start with something like red, which benefits for energy, strength, power, and determination, it can also have a flip side to that as well. It can also be seen as, you know, when you get browser validation errors, they come up in red text or red boxes and stuff. So that can have the opposing effects there. Orange, which is joy, sunshine, and tropics, which is common for a CTA button. You've got yellow, which is joy, happiness, intellect, and energy, which is quite interesting because Amazon's buy button is uh, permutations of yellow. Then you've got green, which is one of the most uh, easy visual cues to pick up on the page, and also one of the most com uh, common uh, conversion buttons on the landing page or a website, which represents growth, harmony, and freshness. Blue is trust, loyalty, wisdom, confidence, and intelligence. With purple, you're looking at power, nobility, and luxury. White is faith, purity, a black, uh, comes under power, elegance, and formality as well. So what you'll find is uh, people will make snap decisions. So it only takes one-tenth of a second to form a first impression about a person. Uh, websites are pretty much very, you know, they're not really that different. So it takes about 50 milliseconds, you know, or so for users to make and form an opinion on your website that determines whether they're going to stay or leave. Uh, users form design opinions uh, in around, I think, yeah, users around 17 point milliseconds. So what I'm going to do is I'll cite all the research. I'll post all of these into the show notes for the podcast and into the comments once this live is finished so that you can go back and look at the data itself. Um, so a few years ago, Google confirmed that 50 milliseconds number in their own research. In fact, according to their study, some opinions developed within 17 milliseconds, though this effect was less pronounced on some of the designs. One second, just checking the comments. Uh, mate, do you realize you have subtitles on? Love this. What an interesting subject. Gold. All right, let's get back into it. So effectively, we're going back to about a few years ago, like I said, about Google, right? So it takes 2.6 seconds for a user's eyes to land on an area of a website that most influences their first impression, right? There's also a study. This study was divided uh, six parts of the websites and then uh, monitored the student's eye movement, which is something that I want to talk about eye movement as it zigzags across the page and why we have bullet points and everything else. So the six website sections that drew the most interest from the viewers was the institution's logo, 
which a user spent 6.48 seconds focused on that area before moving on. The main navigation menu uh, amongst uh, as popular as the logo and subject spent an average of 6.44 seconds. The search box users focus on just over six seconds. The site's main image users eyes fixated for an average of 5.94 seconds. The site's written content, which you believe is only 5.59 seconds so when we talk about a lot of sites are focused around conversion copy hypnotic copy etc long sales pages it's quite interesting how this is all fed into it now at the bottom of the website the users spend about 5.25 seconds on and the other thing we've got to look at is the first impressions from other reports again i'll cite these studies as well is 94 percent design related so british researchers analyzed how different designs and information uh, content factors influence trust of online health sites right so the study showed it clearly that they look and feel the website was the main driver for first impressions of all the feedback the test participants uh, participants gave is 94 percent was about design um, so some of the, the words that came back from this was complex, busy layout, lack of navigational aids, boring uh, web design, use of color, pop-up adverts, slow introductions to the site, small print, too much text, corporate look and feel, uh, per uh, poor search capabilities. Only 6% of the feedback was the, about the actual content. So the visual appeal uh, of the website and the navigation had basically the biggest influence on people's first impressions. Uh, where do I want to go next? Yes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a screen share. We're going to go over a series of uh, websites. So what we're going to look at on this session is less of the analytics side, but more the understanding on the design side and interpreting what people have missed off of their website. So I've got a, a list here, which I'm just going to bring up onto the screen. Again, I'll put these into the show notes so people listening back on the co uh, podcast can follow along. So one second. Uh, there we go. All right, just a quick question here from side B. Hey, Danny, does any of the search research state type of device or screen size? I want to cover that in the future session size, so bear with me on that. The, today's session is really going to be the feel and design of uh, landing pages, really, and try and isolate some areas. So, for instance, here, we've got 50 exceptional Shopify stores to inspire entrepreneurs. So people want to go and read this blog, and it's great, and there's some great sites in there. But based on the information I've just given you in the earlier part of the show, let's start picking apart some of these pages and, and look to where they can improve. Uh, can someone in the comments let me know they can see the full screen? <clears throat> All right, so let's go to the first one here. Looks like it's showing. So partake foods, right? I call it hitting the fisherman over the head with the wet fish, right? So straight away, the message is on point. Quite good visual design. Nice layout in terms of where they worked with the photography, using supporting props, etc. And if you look at it, it says super delicious cookies that are also gluten-free, vegan, and uh, allergy-friendly. Uh, get some cookies. So their call to action is get some cookies. It's hitting the fisherman over the head with a wet fish. It's also po pointing out very key areas of what you should understand about their products, gluten-free, vegan, and of course, pertaining to allergies. So this makes a really good attempt here. You can see the search functionality at the top, the header at the top, or the navigation system is pretty good in terms of the uh, how they've used uh, photography and solid colors to separate both of those. If we scroll down now, uppercase magazine. Now, if I landed on that, this looks really arty, right? So it's nice how they've used that kind of off blue white color against the book is very arty but if i'm going there they're missing a massive opportunity um 
I mean, the book says one little piece at a time. I'm not getting that full message across. Now, they're a magazine. I'm not expecting uh, it to be the same, but they do sell this magazine. It's got subscriptions. It's got renewals. It's got gift subscriptions. They're all in the menu bar, but they're completely missing opportunities here. All right, so everyone else can see it here. Good. All right, let's go to the next one. This one here, Hewitt Demin Co. Just launched organic shorts, guy with shorts on. Uh, that's fine. It looks a bit 2008, 2009 design, like a WordPress kind of layout. It's not really site-wide. I would like to see a bit more blend going on here. You've got men's jeans, women's jeans, but look at the font size. I think they've missed an opportunity there. This is where when you're scanning and zigzagging across a screen, what you're looking for is bullet points, right? You want these things to stand out. Um, so I think there's some missed opportunities there. There's quite a lot going on uh, above the fold. But where is, is if I scroll down, nope, there's no shop now buttons. I want to go somewhere, uh, but it doesn't pertain to that on the screen. Going to the next one, obviously, these uh, moccasins, what they're doing here, they're leading on visual de design without words, right? But the photography is really good. They blurred the background to bring and set forth the shoes at the front, and the button says shop moccasins, summer simplicity. Now, it's saying summer simplicity, that's like a play on words, but what does it really mean? You know, it's I see it from an artistic point of view. Uh, people know that they're going to go and buy moccasins when they land here. It's a good product shot and everything else. But there's probably a few opportunities there. I mean, some of the things that we don't see on this page is like free shipping. It doesn't have a telephone number. It doesn't have any trust signals. It doesn't have uh, – what else is it? It's got a search functionality. It's got add to cart. So, yeah, and the navigational system is simple. It's not that there's anything wrong with this site, but they're probably missing out on a few opportunities here with the addressing, you know, having a strong title when you arrive to the website. What is it? You know, some are simplicity, and it could be a play of words with, pertaining to uh, moccasins or something else. So I think there's a slight opportunity that has been missed on this one. If we go down now... Package free. So this site is called Package Free, Great Hair, No Packaging Required. Shop 100% Package Free Hair Care. Okay, that's fine. To me as a guy, and not their target market, maybe, it, I'm just looking at and I'm seeing lots of soap. So what? Are they just going to give it to the Amazon driver or UPS to deliver it and they're going to hand it in their hand with no packaging on? Where is the point there is terms of the reduction of the packaging? I'm understanding from reading this, but you've got to remember, if people are making these decisions in 2.67s or they've made a decision in 0 0.17 milliseconds, then I think there's an opportunity missed there. Great photography, nice layout, like the way that they've done with the text and stuff. Uh, you can see at the top here, free shipping on US orders over 35. Very, very important. You could have a phone number. There could be some other things as well. But I think, you know, this is above the fold. So you can see the little lip that gives you the visual cues and guidance to, to scroll down. But I think there's still plenty of opportunity to be had on this page here. Now, this is a florist. This is a florist. It tells you it's a florist, but look at here as well. Pick up and delivery orders. It's got a section here where it shops bakery. If we go back up at the top a little bit. Yeah, shop, mill and bakery, journal about. Yeah, so it, it does what it says on the tin as well. It's promoting its local, uh, now offering free local deliveries. Let's go down to all birds here. Uh, performance done naturally. Okay, so I can see a pair which looks like women's running trainers, right? It's got an option to shop men, shop women. But what are we missing here? Like, I don't know who this brand is. This isn't Nike. We'll look into Nike, Versace, and Apple and stuff later. Are they trying to – am I missing, you know, all birds? Is it because I'm 45-year-old and I'm out of touch? But I don't know much about this brand. And performance done naturally, what does that mean? Does the uh, – is it made with natural materials? It's not telling me what it is. What it does look, it looks good. It looks arty and everything else. But for me, it's missed a big opportunity on the messaging here. Uh, Nudger. It says bras on the front, and it's got a lady holding up a bra top. 
Every product you buy helps another woman. Nigel products are made by single mothers and female heads of households. We pay above market wages, provide health benefits and support child education with stipends. Right. Very simple design, good visibility there. And don't forget as well, they've got a really good message there. So people are going to want to buy into this to know that it's supporting mothers and female heads of households, etc. They're letting you know they're paying decent wages. This is where people are going to invest. Good product, good photography, good message, good story. United by Blue. So United by Blue here, conscious goods, cleaner oceans shop now our mission but what is it i know by looking at the navigation bar because i'm going for a demonstration and i'm going to scan this kind of stuff but if you land on this website it, it doesn't say too much to you it's good photography right good layout and stuff um but is it the clothes that they're wearing it's conscious goods it's cleaner ocean they're pointing to the fact that they're out by the sea but what does that message say to you? Just want to quickly check the comments. If anyone's got any questions, let me know and I'll answer them on the way through. Let's go down to Bali. She's on a roll and no one can stop her. Brilliance, it's got the, the, the product in there. So Brilliance is a roll-on perfume oil for the fiercely smart, ambitious and purposeful woman. Straight away, it says everything you need to know on the tin. Look at the way they've used photography on one side and they've used a, a, a kind of angled image there where they're using the white on the grey and they've used a good use of colour where they're, they're standing out here. It says no one can stop her. Very distinct, good design work, uh, great photography there. The product's in the middle. You know exactly what you're getting so you land on that website within 2.6 seconds instantly you're going to know what you're buying and you'll see through the message there okay black and bold speciality coffee and tea meets community impact now very over the top in terms of a massive banner going across the front but it works right it's got good photography in the, uh, in the background the way that laid it out the good use of white and the tonality on laying out on the white paper with the photography they've got the drop shop drop shadow effect there and they've used a big red banner there with white text here you can't miss what the message is you know exactly what you come to the site from and what you're buying it says speciality coffee and tea meets community impact now you don't know what their message is yet but you can look into that later good packaging design as well so i think this this looks pretty good, even though it's very, very minimal in terms of their message. Adored Vintage. Now, this is a really interesting one. Let me just check here. Yeah, this one's a really interesting one because I have no idea if I landed here what it was, right? I know it looks here. Is Are they selling the, the, the lady's dress who's standing in this field? Good photography. Uh, are they selling the hat? Are they selling both things? I mean, you've got the, the navigational system at the top. There's a lot of artistry involved in terms of maybe the design team has got together, but they're for forgetting the connection with the audience. What if people don't know what we sell? So I look at this picture. Do they sell both of those products? Maybe. But it's not jumping out at me straight away because they've, they've chosen to go the route of being very artistic first rather than breaking down and getting the end user that arrives at the site for absolute clarity of what they're getting. There's no, there's no um, um, call to action buttons that takes you to their new season, their new line or anything. So I think there's a massive waste of opportunity there where they could have had a call to action button that takes them directly somewhere and some overlay text to give you a bit more clarity in what they're doing here. Cheekbone beauty. Again, this isn't, I'm not their target market, right? I don't know what they are selling here. And I'm probably not meant to as a guy, right? But it says sustain powerful pigment. Good photography, kind of powerful putting the message across, but they're not clear on the product. Even if I look up here, so it's Cheekbone, that's the brand name, right? Free shop shipping, this is good, as seen on uh, Dragon's Den. So um maybe it's well well known and i just don't know about it so you don't need to get as much message because the brand recognition's there it says shop about pink feather campaign and contact and it's got a shop now button which is down below 
that's fine. But I'm still kind of, I don't know clearly what their product is. So if I was to go and shop for my wife, she said, can you go out and get me X, Y, and Z? I arrive at this site, being a guy, obviously going to be a bit clueless as well. But I don't know what the hell I'm doing here to buy what product because I've just got no idea on that first impression. If we go to the next one, meow, meow, tweet. So the message here, it's armpit season, catchy headline. Natural deodorant in compostable or refillable packaging. Oh, and it works. Shop deodorant. The message is there, right? So you've got the products in the middle. I don't know what something new means to scroll down. Yeah, there's nothing really that ties into something new other than them displaying their uh, their new product. But if you look at the the impact, you if you're looking uh, from like Google research, we zigzag go down on the screen. So we'd start at the top left and go down right and zigzag. So as you're looking across the, the screen, you're capturing the image. I think there's a wasted opportunity on something new. But then you look here, it says armpit season, natural deodorant in, in I'm not going to try and uh, say what that is, refillable packaging. Oh, and it works. So let's go to the next one. I really like this one here. So Baby Boss, this one here is toys your child will love. Every toy provides a fair trade income to a mother in need. Notice they've got two call to action buttons on there. They're, they're clearly distinctively defined. The separation between the two, the shop now is highlighted in the background. So it's filled in and then you've got it. So it's transparent in terms of watch our story. Great photography, good use of white background, very Apple 2016 kind of design. But yeah, I really like what this site is done. If there's a very, very small critique, I would say, why not toys your children will love rather than toys your child will love? So I think that one's a pretty good one. Uh, from there, let's go down to Karen Fitch, conscientious memoir, aspired apparel, hitting the fisherman over the head with the wet fish. It shows exactly what the product is. It's got a shop now button. The only thing I would say here is the placement is clothing accessories that let you be auth your authentic self. But obviously with the designer there, if that was shifted over slightly, that's the other thing you've got to be careful is font size, depending on the devices and stuff. And obviously the tonalities on the set background. So you can see here, we um, if we shifted all the text over just slightly before it goes onto the sleeve of, of the person wearing the coat here, then you'll be able to see the full text. Roffies. All right, this one here, step right into colourful comfort. Obviously, we can clearly see what they are here. So that kind of stands out, like the use of colours and stuff. Uh, stop. Step right into colourful comfort. It's not a bad play on words. I mean, they could have a little bit more text on there. Let's have a look here. Shoes, bags, about. Yeah, I think this kind of gets a message across. You know what you're getting as you arrive on site. It's a bit minimal. You could have had a few more things there. I'm not sure about the shop shoes bit here. Obviously, that's a clickable link, but it looks like a old school hyperlink on a 1998 dial up website. But it does go with the colors. It does go with the styling and the fonts. But that would be slightly my own critique, my only critique, but pretty well pretty well divined of exactly what it is uh what's this one here mfmg cosmetics your lips but better clear use of the uh product now <clears throat> two things here using the terminology i'm going to use a form button as an example often you see on these websites you go to a website it says welcome to our website as a title which is absolutely useless for anyone to read but on the forms it says submit on the button what does that really mean? It's not really an action and it can be confusing to like if you've got a, a website selling the services and you quote people, put get quote. So uh, 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 the word get or buy now or now and get are two points of actions on a psychological level that people can take, whereas submit is like it's that in between. We all know what a submit button is, but it's not a clearly defined directive. So with this this button here, why not say it's too small and using the, the brown button, the light brown and then the kind of browny gray font there 
they've lost an opportunity for it to stand out a little bit. Either you would invert the color of the button, uh, sorry, the, of the text on there to white and darken the button, or you would darken the text to make it stand out. Um, so there could have been made improvements there. But it's clearly defining what it is. It's a bit light on text, but it's about putting the product front and uh, like being the main focus, of course. If we look at this one here, Suta. So this is Sue and Tar's favorites. Click here. Now, great photography, uh, nice, clean, white background. But what are they selling? Like I could come here without looking at the menu bars. Right. Are they selling the dress that the lady's wearing or the top she's wearing? Are they selling the necklace or are they focused on the lipstick? So until you start getting into those, uh, like scrolling and going around and spending longer on the site, I think, again, clear opportunity. Again, buttons with cl uh, click here. OK, you're going to click here. But why are you going to click here? Because if you remember years and years ago, before people would address that on their buttons because of anchor text and stuff like that, there'd be more direct directive, visit the blog, et cetera, et cetera. But click here. Uh, is not really defined, and when, you when you're scanning left to right across the screen, it may be better to have that click button over onto the right-hand side. Let's have a look here. Cool. Right, let's go to the next one. Beneath your mask. So they've used good photography, imagery, layout, the products are there. The, the product itself is here on the right-hand side. You can see with the banner, I would say the biggest letdown of this, which is only small, but it's just the font size. It's quite small. They've got plenty of room to make adjustments there for clarity. It's again, uh, uh, same thing with when you go to a website, you may go to like a consultant's website that says paradigm shifting, converting this and and all of these big kind of words that just sound really good and intelligent, but not got clarity. So always remember that when you're writing uh, for the end user is clarity is always going to um, trump uh, complexity as well. So nourish, revitalize and transform your skin and hair with pure non-toxic beauty that appears to all your senses. Quite a good headline there. This is uh, obviously an exfoliator because I can read it on the bottle. I've had to do a little bit of work to, to one to the font size to look at the bottle. And then I'm assuming that these products are not just there as props, but uh, part of the natural ingredients that go into their products. Let's go to Tentree. Rehabilitate Australia's wildlife. Our limited edition Australia collection capsule directly supports the recovery of vulnerable and displaced wildlife. So I'm assuming they're, they're saying support now, but does that support now, if I click on that button, mean we go and make a donation, which is going to be on their homepage, and by the looks of things, women, men's kids, it's uh, an e-commerce site. So I think there's a bit of a mixed message there. Of course, you want to be able to support Australia's wildlife. That's absolutely fine. But if I was to click that button, does that take me to support and make a donation or will I go and buy these products on their store? So, again, it's about getting a clearer message on that one. Beauty a Bakery, very clear what it is, products uh, in the shop there. Uh, we all most miss Beauty Bakery's birthday month. Let's celebrate nine years anyway, et cetera, et cetera. Birthday gifts with purchases, awards, and social giveaways. So it's obviously you know what you're buying when you come to this store. I mean, they could have been a bit clearer in their messaging. Obviously, this is a promotion. One thing I'm going to talk about on the show tomorrow is using the what I call the deftly sliders where they slide across and go over some of the data that kind of backs it up. But I'll save that for tomorrow's show. This one here, wax seals made for you. Beautiful sealing wax, the finest wax stamps. Right, so obviously this is related to sealing wax. And notice how many times they've gone to imprint it into the end user's mind by making clear what it is. The slight letdown here, can you read this text here? So wax seals made for you, but then the white on white makes it very difficult to read it. Um, so there lies a problem there for clarity on that side. But they have made it a clear message of what they do, wax stamps, wax seals, et cetera, et cetera. But, yeah, it's again, it comes down 
to the copy on the page in some places you're not it's not legible to read i'll skip that one let's go to some others this one here to suno very very clear again i like the way that you use the white background and then they've used the brown on the image uh, back set the way that they've laid out the products as well it goes back to the point it's very like a good photography good layout right using those blocks and stuff in the background it's very clear what it is natural bamboo pads and organic cotton tampon so they're letting you know what the products uh, are made of gives you a good visualization of the imagery there uh, i mean they could have had other stuff here but i think it's a good clean design and they've used the simplicity factor where they managed to sum down to get their whole message across to to have a look at this and within 2.6 seconds you're instantly going to know what this site is about and what you're going to be buying this one i'm going to skip let's go for here right this one here sugar cosmetics so they've got a featured collection here don't really like the banner too much at the top i think it takes away um it's got the fact that it's shop now lightweight luxurious and irresistible uh magnetic i think they could have done a little bit more with the banner there but with the featured collection they're very clear on what it is smudge me not liquid lipstick smudge me not liquid lipstick it's very clear exactly they're getting their point across that it's smudge free um so it's clear but again i would definitely have a look you can see by the dots under here this is just a a blog page so i won't click through to the sites but you can see that's going to be a rolling banner again it's something i want to get into tomorrow which is when you're looking at a web page and then suddenly something flashes and changes and stuff that can be unnerving for the end user is too much of a distraction where their eyes are focused on somewhere else i understand why they want to do it because they want this to be on a rotating banner so that uh, effectively they can show you and squeeze in as many products as possible when you land but that isn't always good for the when you've got rapid eye movement and you're also being distracted by looking at something else that you may actually be interested in buying okay this is a tofino soap company right good photography but where's the soap i mean i see a uh it what looks like i don't know what is that made of clay so you've got a clay pot on a on, on a wooden log with a cv background that's been pixelated in the background and the cover but i can't see the product so effectively that's lost on me yes you've got the three dots at the top like a burger sign to go to the navigational system but it's so simple i'm missing what it is i would want to see the products on the page instead of that uh in, instead of that clay pot why not the products that are sitting in shop definitely definitely uh missed an opportunity here all right do we have any other more comments no we're good all right let's crack on uh so this website here again good use of photography uh handcrafted shoes made in italia so that's good but if we look at this here they've got the gentleman on the on the bike but you can't really see a close-up of the shoes of course you can go through and, and everything else but i think there's missed a bit of an opportunity there of the in in the shop where there's not a clear divine uh, clearly defined seeing the actual product itself again it goes down to let's make this look really nice smart and looks artsy and everything else but what you're doing is you're making the end user doing a little bit more work than necessary if you've been a bit more creative with the photography you could have bring him closer in shot and be more focused around the footwear which is the product that i'm selling uh satya so this one here i'm not a massive fan of the actual design but what i like about it look at the main headline simple natural skincare some of the most difficult problems have the simplest solutions so it, they're actually writing into their copy 
we solve a problem and, you know, there is a problem and we solve it and we have the solution. It's got a shop now button. It says plant-based, fragrance-free and steroid-free. And then obviously if you click on that video, I'm sure it's an introduction video. It's 26 seconds long, probably optimized uh, on this site to to for the length time of playing on the website. They've probably done some conversion optimization on this. So they know that people get bored after a certain period of time. Again, we can talk about that in future shows of how to measure these things. If we go to last object, reusable swab, uh, buy a beauty, buy a basic. Uh, I'm not fully clear what it is. It looks like an earbud. Uh, and it might be amazing, but the thought of washing an earbud and then using it again uh, doesn't necessarily appeal to me. But I understand what they're doing it for in terms of uh, disposable materials. But I like the way that they've used the background again. They've they've used the they've centralised. They're, they're using space. So space on images as well if it's laid out right that also one it creates focus on where to look at on the page and two it the element of trust because it's less busy that's going on there but if you look at uh the swab it shows the product and everything else but uh, i think they could have made a better use of by beauty and by basic notice there are two uh, white text with black buttons now, they lost an opportunity there because they're asking for two call to actions. But if you want to distinguish them, why didn't they invert one of the buttons like we showed earlier on in um, in the, uh, the I can't remember the name of the site now, but one of them was shop now and uh, basically watch their video. And they used the, the great use of how they one button was filled in, one button was inverted. OK, Verve Coffee Roasters. So yeah, we can see it's uh, we can see it's coffee, and then you've got canned version. The only thing is, is like what's really random about it, right? So it doesn't give you uh, buttons to go and click through to buy those products. But this third image here, it's a it's an illustration of a truck with wings on. So either it's a flying truck because we get it there a lot faster because they're smashed on that coffee drunk like a liter of that coffee before they drive it to your house or i, I don't know I'm, I'm kind of a myth to what brings the, to the table the the wastage on that site because imagine if you're scanning the site and you come over to your right hand side where most of the time uh forms are placed above the fold i just think that one there is has a bit of a wasted opportunity for use uh okay so owen says once we have got our perfect image what advice do you have about alt tags etc apologies if this is covered let me cover that at another time owen if that's okay uh because that is something that i will talk about in the future series of this let me go back to there but i will get back to you on that mate um yes yeah, so i think there's some lost opportunity there without a doubt unwrapped life the cure for anything is salt water, sweat, tears, or the sea. And our vegan sea salt, soap, I don't know what that ex that word is there. So good imagery. You can see that it's soap rested on the uh, on the bath. It's, it's reduced the background, so it makes the product the focus. They've got a what's new button, so inquisitive for you to go and click through. But I think where it lists it down is where they've changed the font to make it like the design or the, from a di designer's point of view to try and make it pop is not legible after the word soap, unless someone in the comments wants to read that back to me. Um, but other than that, I think that can kind of work, but I think it's just let down with that as well. Um, Chocolate Alchemy, this looks to me a bit 2008, 2009 WordPress style format can you see here you've got the site links on the side and you've got the navigation across the top it's good that we know what it is right it's a retail store it sells chocolate and they're talking about the uh, the art and science of bean to bar chocolate right but what is the science behind that what they've done is to put all this navigation down here at the bottom so what's above the fold i get it you want to you want to be able to access stuff but for me this is really really busy and I think the style of it is pretty old school as well. And it goes back to those trust and design factors that we discussed earlier on. 
coating summer workwear shop the collection picture of a white jacket which is white work uh, workwear so very clear defined they're using imagery as their lead of course but it, it says everything it needs to do i would say shop the collection if i was going to be picky that i would make that stand out a little bit more because they've managed to make the summer workwear stand out you know exactly what it is it's got the image there in the background but i think the call to action button is a bit light in terms of especially where it is depending on our if people have got their browser in in full mode or half mode you might lose that button underneath as well because it's quite low down to the bottom of the fold on the full expanded screen let's have a look skip through these because there's quite a lot to go through here i'm not going to do all 50 of these i just want to scroll through a couple more this is an interesting one uh beefcake swimwear right so for obviously it's designed for plus size uh i like the way that they've used the the play on the words and stuff good photography uh, there could be a lot more information going on the page. But again, I think, look, you can see here by the five dots, these are sliders, uh, which is going to be where they're going to lose a trick. If someone's reading something and it slides across and it disrupts them. The other thing here as well, the navigation system, the color of the navigation system there, you can see the white text against the rocks here. You, you can barely see it. So that would need to stand out a bit more. The the Beefcake logo as well, that kind of gets lost into the rock in the background. All I had to need to do is just put um, like a very light uh, block behind the navigation there. It can be quite su subtle, ad adjusting the opacity and stuff. But they could have had like that, like a black tint behind there, which would then bring out the navigation system a lot better. Uh, Silk and Willow, I think that's kind of clear like this one here free standard delivery on usa orders over 175 again so important to have on your website for trust factors you know do you have a telephone number do you have uh, the email address on the site obviously a lot of people are using chats and stuff nowadays but be, being very clear that what your price point is on your free deliveries uh Soap bars, bars. Okay, I just uh, missed this. What else have we got? Verve ripping off Red Bull. Give me wings. Yeah, I think they got that kind of idea from give me uh, from from that advert. But again, for me, it was like they they've lost an opportunity. They've been arty there on the side of the screen. That's really really important in terms of how eye coordinate goes across the screen. So if anything. They should have put their clarity, which is either the first quadrant or the second quadrant, over to that right-hand side, uh, and then they have the less chance of missing opportunities there. Let's have a look here. This one's quite busy. Uh, Tazza chocolate, you know what it is, pure indulgence, stone ground, smooth. Again, they're using sliders. You can see from the three dots here. Shop chocolate discs. Yeah, I'm not keen on this one with the, with the sliders and stuff. There's and it's good that they're bringing the the focus of the products to the front, but I think a lot of a better designer would have been able to refine this more to break down the complexity of all of these different colours in your face. Uh, it's not that necessarily the colours are clashing. There's just so much going on on this page. It has you your eyes rolling around the, around your head. Smarty pits smell sweet all summer. That's pretty good. I mean, there's probably too much going on in terms of the overlay tone that they've got there, uh, pushing the products back. But you can see that whilst doing so, they've made more effort to bring the text to the front, although they pushed the product back. You can clearly see what the product is. The shop now and how your purchase helps saves lives. Notice again, two call to actions but they're a distinguishing between the two. They're highlighting the shop now button with a yellow background. Why? Because that for them is they're determined to make a better, for you to make a better choice in order, they want you to help save lives, but they also want you to buy the product as well. So they've used that as the dominant in terms of where they want you to, to take your next click. Let's go to 
maker gear, industrial power, parkland. Now let's get these. The honey pot. Okay. So this is a refreshing panty spray. This is uh, lavender, the honey pot company, which is fine, but it looks like the text is just been done on a typewriter here. Uh, and so for me, they lost the opportunity. It goes down to the blocks of text as well. I mean, a lot more work could be done with the design, but what about bullet points? What about getting your point across when people are scanning the page? You've got this, this text, as I said, it's like the typewriter, original typewriter font. If they were block bullet points broken into the free benefits, that would be, uh, be a lot better there, or they would have done better use in terms of the font that they have used and include made that more inclusive into the design so let's come off of there for now so we've covered there oh it says owen says how far below the fold should a home page go good question i will cover more on that but it depends on the complexity of your product and your service right so when you're split testing your road test uh, and testing play pages often you would t uh, test a shorter landing page versus a longer landing page normally the longer landing pages are there to get the technical aspects over of your product in a more detailed fashion and as you're scrolling down using imagery and stuff like that effectively what you're looking at is clarity and getting as much information to the customer as possible i mean we'll talk about scroll depth from that in future episodes when we come to to measuring those things uh what was the other thing i wanted to show you so we've covered the main shopify brands let me bring up some examples of sites so i've kind of talked to my way through all of these different sites and and uh made a critique on them but what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you some of the sites, our sites, and then I'm going to critique and you can critique them in, in the comments as well because there's no, it's not perfect. What happens is you build and develop a site and then you invest so much time into it, which I'll go into tomorrow because what I want to do is breaking down what the team is, the avatar, how to build that team and how to develop that site on paper or that landing page on paper with a focus view before you go into production. So what I'm going to do, let's bring up the branded by women site uh let me just bring this in okay so we can see with the branded by women site the focus here is to make sure all the key information is above the fold. So obviously you've got the branding, you've got the dates, we have our sponsors as well, but the three, uh, the two bubbles at the top, right? Three interactive live shows, one's going to be tonight, which is the kickoff, and then three for the rest of the week. And then there's three days of content, which starts tomorrow. And then you've got 40 plus world-class speakers, get your free pass. So we've got one call to action and we try to use uh, the colors and the space you've got to see the free hosts on on the page there but th the key thing is is to get the message over as quickly as possible because if you think i mean we still got to optimize this i think the loading time's about four or five seconds but we've got so many images on there and videos and stuff that's a problem that we would need to address for the future but i feel that we've done an okay job of getting over exactly what it is it's a virtual summit as I said, three, three days of content, live shows, and the amount of speakers that feature on it. As we scroll down, you can see the ladies move as well. Why are we doing this? So effectively, the next step is we've showed you what we're doing, and now we're breaking down why are we doing this. It goes into there. I mean, this could have been better in terms of bullet points. And then you've got the promo video, which could have been laid out better on the site. I talked to Alex about that. Then you get to see the speakers. Then we're telling people what we learn. This is where the bullet points come in, yeah? So very key in terms of some of the presentations. I mean, this is kind of standard stuff. I'm not going to keep scrolling and go through this site, but I just wanted to, to show you uh, some of our sites that we worked on that needs improving. Let me go to the next one I want to show you, which is going to be the Data Brill site which actually going before doing putting these sessions together, I looked and found a good few mistakes that we uh, we would need to address. So let me just pull up the data bill site now. All 
Okay, let me share the screen. Okay, so data build site, first thing you, that you see when you get there, the one of the problems we may have done is overcooked the broth. We spent so long getting all these, these animations were all made. These are not uh, off the shelf solutions. These are all made, all these designed by our design team. But straight away, the title is Scalable Amazon PPC Management. We manage your unlimited SKUs and keyword data using proprietary advanced algorithms, machine learning, and smart humans all done in-house. Now, we may two things got to look at. If our market is based on, you know, larger brands that may not be in a traditional Amazon community, so we look after seven and eight-figure brands, but not at all in the same ecosystem as us that go to conferences and stuff like that. So sometimes the wording needs to be clearer. I'm looking at the the screen as we've got it up now. On a small screen, to me now, looking at that, there is too much text going on, right? So that's something that I would look to optimize for clarity. See, where it says no setup fees, no long-term contracts, no minimum term contracts, I think there should be a bit more clarity there as you've got the movement of the animation here in the background. The other thing I noticed as well, which is going to affect people opting in on the form, if I go to watch our video, what's happened here, I can't get and click the video off. So there's an introduction. There's an introduction video that we've done now. That's going to piss off an end user when they're hearing me rabbit in the way in their ear and then the form's in the way. And so that's, uh, that's something that we would need to address as well. Um, one of the other things that we would need to address on that, if I go back to the page, I'm just going to reload it so the video goes away. If we look here, get called. It should say get a call. It's not very clearly defined there. I mean, the form was, was added uh, later because it, it, as we scroll, you can see it down below. The other fatal mistake that we've done as well, it's... This is a, the, the main call to action, right? Someone comes to the website and they want to, uh, there's one attribute. We want people to reach out to us and then we can do a discovery call, right? So it's got get a free discovery call, but not everyone's going to necessarily know what, well, what is a discovery call, right? So we could find better ways of explaining that. The other thing looking through here now as well, it says where it says get called, that white text on the a green button. OK, that's not very clear either. The other thing is, if you notice, is that instead of our conversion button being the only color on the website that should be uh, the conversion button, it should be the only color. It shouldn't be mixed up. Right. So if you, you, you're converting on your website, you should never use that color elsewhere. It's the same green as we're using everywhere. Watch the video, even down to uh, privacy and cookies policy. Obviously, you don't want to blend too much in different uh, colors, etc. But my call to action has now been diluted because I'm using the same color across the website. If we scroll down, we've got the testimony video thumbnails. Again, you can measure the length of time that people watch these. We go how it works. So it gives you a description on how it works. So step one, you can see these are moving. So uh, book a call, uh, we apply a technology, we launch your campaigns, da, 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 da. And then there's another call to action button here that takes us to the contact us page. Why choose us? Scalable onboarding technology, yada, yada. I'm not saying this to be a pitch, so I'm going to come off this now. But I'm seeing this here as from when you're working directly on this for a, a period of time, you lose sight of stuff. You don't see everything. And sometimes you go and build something and then you come back later and you go, okay, let's optimize for this, 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 and this. And you start to brainstorm. Obviously, a lot of this stuff's got to be based on data as well. But I've, I've just spotted just because I wanted to, to d provide um, some of the ideas behind conversion optimization and give you a guidance in the audience to to see if it's something that you want to partake on your own websites i'm able to pull apart our mistakes from before and you'll find this with your website as well because a lot goes into building the landing page it's not just whacking up a load of copy um just going to bring this down now i'm going to throw a curveball 
website into here because all I've done is talked about design and everything else. Let me bring this one up and I want to explain something to you guys as well. Where are we? Oh, there's two more actually I want to show you before we go. But this is really, really important. And this pertains to, you know, like where people want to sell you courses like, you know, here's a funnel and it will work on everything. It don't. Or you want to get these long landing pages with loads and loads of text on them um, with just plain background and it's just like hypnotic text and everything else. Them, them sites won't work for someone like Apple. You won't go to Tesla to buy a car and then you have to scroll 15 miles down to, to buy the product like you would an ebook, right? There's also times when you can get away with absolute murder, right? You can have uh, an intentionally not do a great looking design site, but people instantly know what you're going to get. So let me show you this. And I cleared it with Kevin, but this is me and Kevin King had this joke where I'll spend time building these sites for seller sessions live and all these different things. And he does a PDF and he sells the tickets to the events. But let me just show you his new site, right? No fancy website needed to promote this event. It's better to spend money making sure you get the most value possible from attending. Right. Not everyone is in Kevin King's position, right? So he has a history. People know him for the courses he's done. He's done a lot of rounds on the podcast. He's spoken all over the world. He does work with Helium 10. He's, he's renowned. People know him for his content and everything else. People know when they go to the Billing Dollar Summit what they're going to get. So, on the flip side of that is like someone might look at this website and go, yeah, I'll just knock out one like Kevin King. But it comes down to, right, this is effectively what Kevin's doing. He's selling to marketers. Well, he's selling to Amazon sellers and business owners, but his event is all about marketing. Everyone that knows Kevin will more than likely go, well, I've heard his stuff before. I've checked his courses, da, da, da. And this is why you can get away with building sites that look like that so this isn't just the norm so i'm going to finish up uh, today's session here but i just wanted to, to make it clear that um when it comes to building website it's knowing your market and it's also testing i will test loads of shit and effectively what i think will happen barely happens i always get a curveball in there so when someone says to you buy this funnel and it works it's horseshit it won't guarantee to work for everyone. It may be working for one thing, but it goes back to the point which I'll cover more tomorrow when we look at the Versace sites and stuff like that and we get more technical. Today's session really was about to get you to really think about the amount of work that goes into design and the thought process and the, uh, the attention span of the end user behind it. So I hope you enjoyed that session. I'll be back here at 4 p.m tomorrow uk time and uh don't forget if you get a chance go and check out branded by women tonight is the kickoff show with a free host and it's live tomorrow go to brandedbywomen.com and grab a free pass hope you guys are well take care much love take care of your family and i'll be back here tomorrow